It is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before whom he believed even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Abraham believed in God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. When God the Father looks at me, thank God He doesn't see me. God looks at, He looks at me, He sees the righteousness of the only begotten Son of God, which has been attributed to me and to you by His grace. Sanctification. Having been set apart for God set apart as holy. John 17, 17. Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 17. John chapter 17 and verse 17, Christ says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you brethren beloved of the Lord because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. How did he choose you from the beginning? In Jesus Christ. That's the key. That's the key. From there, go to 1 Corinthians 1.30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. But, ye are, me, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in Christ Jesus. Christ alone. 1 Peter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 and verse 15. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. From there go to verse 15. 1 Peter 1, 15. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Verse 16, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Glorification, the act of giving or ascribing glory to. What an amazing thing. Glorification. Second Peter 1 3. You're still first people over Second Peter. A few pages. First chapter of Second Peter 1 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. John 17, verses 20 and 22. Gospel of John. I know I got you running through the Bible a lot this morning, but we want to see these verses. John 17, 20, 21, 22. Neither pray I for these alone, this is the Lord praying, but for them also which shall believe on me 
through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. 1 Corinthians 15, 43. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 43, talking about this mortal flesh, it is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory, it is sown in weakness, it is raised in power, Romans 8, 17, Romans 8, 17. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with Him, that we may be also glorified together. In that same chapter, verses 29 and 30, Romans 8, 29 and 30, For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. We will, we will, one day, be glorified in Jesus Christ at the resurrection, at the blessed hope. And then lastly, the most unbelievable one of all, Adoption. Adoption is a legal act by which a person is made a child, an heir of another who is not their natural parent. <laughs> an adopted child, by law, must inherit equally with any natural born children. Adoption cannot be withdrawn nor can it be annulled. The relationship is permanent. If you're still in Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 17. Romans 8, 14 to 17. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Male or female, doesn't matter. That's your position. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Daddy, in English parlance. Abba, Father. The spirit itself that dwells inside of us beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if, heir, if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Amazing and wonderful fact. In other dispensations, okay, believers okay, are not adopted as God the Father's children. Salvation in Jesus Christ is complete as it stands without any believer being adopted as the child of God. In fact, God the Father went that step further and has done this to demonstrate the immense love that God has for humanity. As the adopted children of God. Okay? Could have done all those other things without making us his children. And yet he did. And as his children we inherit as heirs God the Father. 
And because he has a natural born son, the only begotten Son of God, we are joint heirs with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as our adoption cannot be withdrawn and cannot be annulled, our relationship to the Godhead is eternal. It is impossible for you to lose your salvation. All of these amazing things occur to you at the very end instant that you believed through the supernatural action of the Holy Spirit of God. If you're still in Romans 8, we'll close with these verses. Pick it up at verse 28 to the end of the chapter. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, there's more. <laughs> Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called. Whom He called, them He also justified. And whom He justified, them He also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord, Heavenly Father. The very fact that I can address you as my Father is beyond comprehension. But you wanted us, you desired us, so greatly that you sent the word of God to take our place and on top of that out of your own free will and desire gave us adoption as your children Oh God, I pray on this Sunday where we have celebrated the Lord's Supper that we remember who and what we are and that we strive to live worthy of our position your children and of that blessed name of Christian. And we pray and ask for it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.